Hey there, anime enthusiasts! Welcome back to our channel where we dive into the captivating world of anime. Today, we have prepared a special treat for all the isekai lovers out there. That's right, get ready to be transported to another world alongside our protagonists, who not only face thrilling adventures, but also become incredibly overpowered. So, without further ado, let's embark on this extraordinary journey where the protagonist is transported to another world and becomes overpowered. Get ready to witness extraordinary power, epic battles, and unforgettable moments that will leave you craving for more. Let's jump right in. Isaiah Sakamaki, a 17-year-old high school student, often feels extremely bored with his current life. He frequently voices his displeasure, even claiming he could make a living by selling his boredom. One sunny day, as he lies next to a calm river, pondering the monotony of his existence, his peaceful moment is disrupted when he notices a group of delinquents from Rubu High School, harassing a younger student. They threaten to tie up the frightened boy's hands and throw him in the river. The boy quietly pleads for help, saying, Save me. Eager for something to relieve his boredom, Isaiah promptly stands up, grabs a large rock, and hurls it powerfully to send the bullies flying. Seizing this chance, he continues throwing rock after rock, kicking up dust and taking pleasure in the bit of excitement. However, the bullies soon realize he is attacking them and run away, leaving Isaiah by himself. Disappointed by the lackluster thrill, he complains to himself about the dullness of the situation. As Isaiah leans down to pick up his school bag, he hears a sparkly sound growing closer and closer. To his surprise, it is an invitation to a parallel world called the Little Garden where he can find all the fun and excitement he wants. He is not the only one longing for adventure and burdened by boredom. Asuka Kudu and Yokosuka Bay, two others with special abilities and overwhelming boredom, will join him on this extraordinary journey. Asuka, born into a wealthy family and possessing the power to control living things and objects, is considered a valuable asset for her family's financial business. Thrilled by the chance to access her inner world, she finds the rare invitation to the little garden neatly placed on her desk. On the other hand, the shy you can communicate with animals and utilize their abilities if she befriends them. However, her introversion is an obstacle as her true wish is to make human friends. Her invitation arrives delivered by her little calico cat who claims it fell from the sky. Upon reading the invitations, the three are instantly transported to the little garden, falling from the sky and landing with a splash in a large lake. Asuka complains about the unexpected plunge while Isaiah asks about everyone's identity and if they got the same letters. Emphasizing her higher status, Asuka introduces herself first, followed by the intimidated Yo. Curious, Asuka prompts Isaiah to describe himself. He paints an unflattering picture, calling himself dangerous, crude, vicious, and the worst kind of person. He advises Asuka to adjust her attitude with him. Using their powers, they sense someone hiding nearby. Impatient, Isaiah breaks the obstructing tree, revealing a cute bunny girl with long blue hair and a costume. Though first considering capturing her, they realize she is not a threat. They let her come forward to introduce herself and explain where they are. With a huge bright smile, she introduces herself as Black Rabbit, the welcoming host of the little garden. She explains they have been given special powers by various gods, demons, and stars, earning the chance to participate in gift games. These involve betting gifts, money, land, resources, prestige, and even people to win rewards by fulfilling the host's conditions. She adds that residents must belong to communities since living outside one is challenging. To demonstrate, Black Rabbit suggests a simple card gift game, revealing her power as a judge master to detect rule. Breaking through her rabbit ears connected to the central network, since they are newcomers, she says they can wager their pride. If they win, she will grant them one request. They agree, and a worn scroll called G's Roll with the approved rules appears. Isaiah proposes examining the cards first to strategize and Black Rabbit agrees. He amazes everyone by analyzing the situation with his exceptional memory and intelligence. After they make their choices, his unconventional approach of taking a middle card, breaking the table, and revealing all the cards surprises them again. Though it does not break any rules, it showcases his unique approach to challenges. With victory secured, Isaiah asks the crucial question. Is this world fun? Black Rabbit's joyful yes delights him with the possibilities ahead. She leads them to the main gates where they meet the 11-year-old leader, Jin Russell, who has messy green hair and worn clothing despite his respected role. However, their arrival causes tension as Black Rabbit learns Isaiah is late, frustrating her. Driven by determination, Black Rabbit's hair turns pink as she sets off to find Isaiah before he causes trouble. Meanwhile, Jin guides Asuka and Yo into the lively community. In a busy cafe surrounded by residents, Asuka discovers her power to talk to animals during a conversation with a waitress who is part cat. 
She starts to uncover her unique ability, but before introducing it fully, the arrogant leader Galdo Gasper from the Forest Jero community joins them. Galdo promptly mocks Jin's community as the no-names and belittles their achievements. Despite the provocation, Jin stays composed and calmly talks with Galdo, demonstrating his leadership and earning respect. As the discussion continues, Asuka and Ya observe with curiosity and concern, beginning to grasp the complex dynamics and rivalries. Meanwhile, Black Rabbit frantically searches for Isaiah, worried he may be caught in a dangerous game by a god. Unfortunately, she arrives too late, finding him at the world's edge facing a formidable water god serpent with total water control. Despite her pleas to reconsider, Isaiah refuses to back down, boldly stating a fight is decided by someone losing, not just choosing a winner. This further angers the god, setting the stage for a perilous encounter. We witness a gripping battle as the god's piercing blue eyes create three giant water tornadoes, while Isaiah remains unafraid with a confident grin. With one punch, he shatters the water current startling the god. Seizing the chance, Isaiah leaps up and delivers a final kick between the god's eyes, knocking him out. Black Rabbit is awestruck by Isaiah's incredible power and considers the implications for her community. His victory rewards them with a valuable water tree sapling to supply water without relying on neighbors. Amidst her joy, an inevitable question arises. What is Black Rabbit's true reason for summoning Isaiah and the others into this world? Initially, Black Rabbit denies any ulterior motives, claiming that their intention was simply to offer a fun experience in the little garden due to the special abilities possessed by humans. However, Isaiah interrupts her, sensing that there is more to the story. He surmises that either her community is exceedingly weak or they have encountered a devastating event that has caused them to decline. Black Rabbit falls silent, tacitly confirming Isaiah's suspicions. Finally, Black Rabbit confesses the truth to Isaiah. It is revealed that her community is in a desperate situation, having lost their name and banner to a powerful demon lord a few years ago. Following a fateful game against the demon lord, which they were unable to decline, they suffered a crushing defeat, resulting in their community being renamed the No Names. Since that defeat, their community has been left with only their leader, Black Rabbit herself, and a handful of children aged 10 and younger who are unable to participate in gift games. This dire circumstance is why they require the assistance of formidable individuals like Isaiah, Asuka, and Yo to aid in rebuilding their community and reclaiming their former glory. Isaiah finds the task of reclaiming their lost banner and honor from the Demon Lord to be a romantic and noble endeavor. He accepts Black Rabbit's plea for assistance, and her hair turns a vibrant shade of pink as she expresses her heartfelt gratitude. Meanwhile, outside the gates of the little garden, Galdo Gasper attempts to persuade Asuka and Yo to join his community. In his persuasive efforts, Galdo belittles the no-names, boasting about his community's unbeaten record in games and claiming control over the area. He presents joining his community as a more favorable option for both Asuka and Yu. However, Asuka employs her powers of control to compel Galdo to reveal the truth behind his claims. It is unveiled that Galdo's community engages in the reprehensible practice of kidnapping women and children from enemy communities. They then employ blackmail to force their opponents to accept challenges, all while concealing the fact that they execute the captured individuals on the same night they are taken. Asuka's revelation exposes Galdo's dark deeds, inciting his fury. As Isaiah and Black Rabbit reunite with the group and become aware of Galdo's actions, they journey to the Thousand Eyes, a prominent trade community renowned for its extensive knowledge of the Little Garden. Upon their arrival, they encounter a young girl dressed in a kimono who introduces herself as Shirayuki, a senior official from a highly ranked gate within the Thousand Eyes. Black Rabbit explains the existence of seven layers in their world, divided by formidable walls. The closer one's gate is to the center, the stronger they are, and the more influential their position within the community. Shirayuki, who bestowed divinity upon the water god Isaiah previously battled, declares herself as the strongest host in the entire eastern side. This bold claim prompts Isaiah, Asuka, and Yo to challenge her, seeking to test their strength against hers. Accepting their challenge instantly, Shirayuki transports them into one of her game board worlds a vast realm in its own right. She then reveals her true identity as a demon lord, possessing powers associated with the sun and a white knight. Witnessing her immense power, Isaiah decides to step back, allowing it to take on the challenge instead. Yo's task is to ride on the back of a griffin and complete one lap around a lake without falling off. The griffin wagers its pride, while Yu gambles with her own life, leaving everyone impressed yet apprehensive. The ride proves to be arduous and demanding, but Yu manages to emerge victorious, thanks to the power bestowed upon her by her father's wooden carving. She forms a bond with the griffin and gains the ability to fly, mirroring the creature's prowess. In celebration of their triumph, Shirayuki presents each of the three heroes with special cards capable of storing their unique gifts. However, when Isaiah receives his card, he notices that it remains unreadable. 
labeled as unknown. Despite this mysterious development, the group presses on. The narrative shifts to the desolate land of the No Names, which was destroyed three years ago. The community members, inspired by Isaiah's victory and the newfound water sapling, put their efforts into utilizing the abundant water flow to bring life and happiness back to their surroundings. Unbeknownst to them, Galdo's subordinates clandestinely infiltrate their community under the cover of darkness with the intention of taking children hostage. Fortunately, Isaiah senses their presence and swiftly intervenes, unleashing his immense power and causing a massive explosion that thwarts the intruder's plans. Jin Russell, the leader of the No Names, arrives at the scene, witnessing the extent of Isaiah's abilities firsthand. Overwhelmed by the display of strength, the subordinates, who were coerced into working for Galdo, plead with Isaiah to eliminate Galdo and his community. However, Isaiah declines their request and reveals a shocking truth. The hostages have already been killed. He uses this revelation as an opportunity to rally the subordinates against Galdo and the Demon Lord, exposing Galdo's heinous actions. This revelation leaves Jin confused and frightened as the true nature of Galdo's community is laid bare. Upon returning to the castle, Isaiah discusses with Jin the community's major drawback. They lack both a name and a flag to represent themselves. As a result, they decide to use their leader's name as a means to gain recognition and draw the attention of other communities. The leader's mission is to take down the Demon Lords, and by making this declaration, they hope to attract like-minded individuals who are interested in joining their cause. During their conversation, Jin shares an intriguing piece of information. He reveals that the No Names community used to have a Demon Lord who participated in games on their behalf. However, this Demon Lord is now under the control of a high-ranking official from the Thousand Eyes organization. Jin explains that they have a chance to retrieve the Demon Lord if they win a game in which their friend is the prize. Intrigued by the prospect, Isaiah agrees to participate in the game, but he sets a condition. Jin must first win the game against Galdo Gasper the following day. The game is set in a residential area that has been overrun by dead trees. Asuka, Yo, and Jin begin their search for Galdo and the designated weapon required to defeat him. They eventually find themselves inside Galdo's castle, where they discover him transformed into a fearsome white beast, his eyes brimming with bloodlust. Jin quickly recognizes that the beast possesses vampiric characteristics, leading him to speculate about the involvement of a certain vampire girl in this matter. It seems that he possesses knowledge about the girl who bestowed power upon Galdo. Throughout the game, this vampire girl has been flying around the area, closely observing their every move. Asuka takes matters into her own hands when you sustains an injury. Her strategy involves setting Galdo's castle ablaze to provoke him into leaving. Once he emerges, she commands the trees to restrain him while utilizing the sword they had found earlier to empower herself for the final battle. This well-executed strategy leads to their ultimate victory over Galdo. Following Galdo's defeat, Jin follows through with Isaiah's strategy. He steps forward in front of the previous members of the Forest Jiro community and makes a promise to each of them. Jin pledges to restore their respective community names and flags, and he vows to eradicate the looming threat of the Demon Lords ensuring the peace of their community. Black Rabbit approaches Isaiah and inquires about his commitment to participating in the game to rescue their lost friend. Isaiah affirms his dedication and expresses curiosity about their friend's characteristics. Black Rabbit reveals that her name is Letitia and proceeds to paint a vivid picture of her wonderful qualities before hurrying off to prepare some tea. Once she leaves, Isaiah addresses the person hiding behind the window, eavesdropping on their conversation. To his surprise, it turns out to be the vampire girl from the previous game. Sinisterly, she extends dead tree branches into the room, creating a menacing atmosphere. Isaiah deliberately provokes the vampire girl with his questions, igniting her impatience as she realizes time is of the essence. Without wasting any more time, she immediately launches an attack on him. The clash produces an explosive sound, attracting the attention of everyone else in the vicinity. Isaiah's powerful counterpunch creates a massive hole in the wall, while restraining and overpowering his opponent. However, before he can deliver another blow, Black Rabbit's urgent plea halts him in his tracks. She reveals that the person he was fighting against is none other than their friend, Letitia. The group gathers together, and Black Rabbit takes the opportunity to introduce everyone properly. It becomes evident that Letitia's involvement in Galdo's game was meant to test the abilities of the problem children and determine if she could trust the No Names community to care for them. Unfortunately, Letitia's own gift game was cancelled, leaving her with no other means to return to them. Meanwhile, the person who visited Shirayuki's location is revealed to be the individual responsible for canceling her game. Furthermore, he discloses his intention to sell her to a buyer. He introduces himself as the inheritor of a renowned community called Perseus. Shirayuki becomes infuriated by his decision, and her anger intensifies when he arrogantly reveals his plan to attack the No Names community. He justifies his aggression by claiming that Letitia, whom he considers his property, 
return to them without his permission. Letitia informs everyone that she won't be able to come back to them once she is sold. Motivated by this revelation, Isaiah challenges Letitia to a fight, aiming to demonstrate his capabilities. The challenge is simple. They both throw lances at each other, and the first one to miss loses. Letitia, utilizing her vampiric powers, launches her lance, but Isaiah effortlessly counters it. He returns the favor by throwing his lance back at her, and to everyone's surprise, she doesn't dodge, seemingly accepting her fate. However, just as the lance is about to strike her, Black Rabbit intervenes, saving Letitia from the impending blow. In a twist of events, a red light suddenly engulfs Asuka instead, turning Letitia into a stone statue. Shocked and bewildered, the group tries to comprehend what has just occurred as Black Rabbit desperately searches for a way to reverse the situation. Shortly after, representatives from the Perseus community, known as the Gorgons, arrive to claim Letitia. Black Rabbit, determined to protect her friend, attempts to reason with the Gorgons, but her pleas fall on deaf ears. She is met with humiliation and disdain due to her status as a no-name. Fueled by her anger and frustration, Black Rabbit unveils her other gift, the Spear of Indra, and threatens the Gorgons with its power. Intimidated by her display, the Gorgons retreat, allowing everyone to regroup and return to Shirayuki's location. At Shirayuki's location, they are greeted by Zeth, the boss of the Perseus community. Black Rabbit makes one final attempt to negotiate and find a resolution, but Izith remains resolute. He refuses any compromise and insists that the only way to retrieve Letitia is if Black Rabbit becomes his vassal. Asuka vehemently rejects the proposition, refusing to bow down to Izeth's demands. In a show of defiance, she attempts to use her gift on him, but to her dismay, it fails to affect him. Izeth retaliates by launching an attack against Asuka, but Isaiah effortlessly intercepts and stops him in his tracks. The tense meeting comes to an end when Shirayuki intervenes, urging everyone to calm down and find a peaceful solution. She emphasizes the importance of unity and understanding in the face of conflict, urging both sides to reconsider their positions, while Black Rabbit contemplates the possibility of accepting Izeth's offer in exchange for Letitia's freedom. Isaiah has already formulated a plan. He reveals that he has obtained two crystals acquired through arduous gift games against formidable opponents such as the Kraken and the Griffin. These crystals grant them the authority to issue a challenge to the legends represented by the Perseus community and the Gorgons. With determination and resolve, Isaiah proposes a counter-challenge to Izeth, forcing him to accept a game on their terms. Black Rabbit wastes no time and hurriedly informs Izeth about the current situation. The community quarters of Perseus are located on a floating island. Isaiah, Asuka, Yo, Jin, and Black Rabbit gather in front of the main gates and begin reading the rules of the Legend Challenge from the G-Age role. The rules state that Izeth is hiding somewhere behind the gates, and if the group finds and defeats him, they win. However, if any of them are spotted by Izeth's subordinates before finding him, they lose the right to challenge him. The disadvantages are evident. The subordinates possess the ability to turn invisible, making it ten times harder to evade them. Furthermore, Izeth's gift is a former demon lord whom he has enslaved, making it extremely difficult to defeat. Nevertheless, Isaiah devises a strategy for everyone to follow. He assigns three roles. Jin Russell will confront the game master Izeth, Yokosuka B will utilize her sensory powers to detect and defeat the invisible subordinates, and Asuska Kudo will act as bait. Black Rabbit assumes the role of the game referee. Isaiah opens the gates of the kingdom, signaling the beginning of the game. Asuka makes her entrance, employing the water sapling gift from the previous episode to defeat most of the subordinates, venturing deeper into the castle. Yo detects invisible enemies and incapacitates them, leading the group to discover that the hats worn by the subordinates grant them invisibility. Isaiah instructs Jin to remain hidden until they spot Izeth. Once they do, Jin should don one of the hats and engage the enemies while remaining invisible. Eventually, they encounter an enemy that even you cannot detect, the chief of the subordinates, who wears the true Hades helmet. Although he gets hit multiple times, she quickly realizes that she can use her father's carvings to detect him using ultrasonic waves. Once detected, Isaiah swiftly knocks him down with a single punch and takes his helmet. Now, their final task is to defeat Izeth. Isaiah and Jin wear the invisibility helmets and rush to the main arena, where Izeth and Black Rabbit await them, accompanied by Letitia's stone statue. Izeth activates his flying boots and ascends above everyone else, proclaiming that there is no reason for him to be the one fighting them. He steps forward and reveals that, in the constellation of Perseus, there is a star known as Algol, a demon of the same rank as Shirayuki. This implies that they already know who they will be fighting instead of Izeth. Izeth swiftly retrieves a metal carving from his necklace and raises it to the sky. It emits a deep red glow before releasing a powerful lightning bolt, awakening the demon lord Algol. Algol appears as a grotesque bound monster with a female, like physique. Upon being summoned, she emits a piercing screech in response to Izeth's commands. 
alerting everyone else on the island to her presence. Bending backward, she unleashes a red lightning bolt from her mouth, powerful enough to extend beyond the community's gates, turning everyone on the island into stone. However, Black Rabbit and Jin manage to dodge the attack, and Isaiah remains unaffected even after being hit. Algol resumes her assault, swinging ropes and causing the arena to crumble. Isaiah grins and urges everyone to observe closely as he effortlessly catches the next swing of Algol's rope. Izeth commands Algol to crush Isaiah on the spot. Algol shrieks again, transforming the ropes into massive snakes that tightly coil around Isaiah's body, but he effortlessly breaks free. Algol launches herself at Isaiah, but he seizes her arms and lifts her up despite her increasing size. Isaiah slams her down forcefully, even when she grows ten times larger. Izeth attempts to strike Isaiah, but his attack is easily evaded, and Isaiah counters with a kick that sends Izeth flying. In a final attempt to win, Izeth orders Algol to unleash the Eternal Prison, a skill capable of petrifying the entire world. Just as Algol is about to release the attack, Isaiah kicks the first lightning rays emanating from her mouth, completely shattering her ability. He swiftly jumps and delivers a powerful punch to her face, creating a hole between her eyes that instantly ends her life. It is revealed that Isaiah's gift allows him to destroy both the heavens and the earth and simultaneously nullify other gifts. Forced to surrender, Isaac finally submits to Isaiah, and Black Rabbit declares victory for the no-names, who have successfully rescued Letitia. Letitia, who was previously turned into a stone statue, regains her original form. It is unanimously agreed that she should become a maid helper to the community as a token of gratitude for their efforts in saving her, a proposition she happily accepts. The members of the No Name celebrate outdoors, indulging in delicious food, drinks, and music. As Perseus was expelled from the Thousand Eyes after the previous game, their flag is taken down from the stars, creating a beautiful display of falling stars for everyone to admire. Isaiah establishes a fresh objective for himself within the No Name community, vowing to raise their flag alongside the flags of other renowned nations in the Little Garden.